As of recording this, it has been five years since I learned to crochet. Now, my crochet journey went something like this. Scrolling through Pinterest, saw a cool looking amigurumi and full honesty, I thought it was knitted at the time because I didn't know enough to recognize the difference between knitting and crochet at that point. Decided I wanted to learn how to make it hit up some YouTube tutorials, made a crappy scarf as my practice project, then proceeded to dive headfirst into amigurumi making, ignoring any and all other crochet subgenres. And I've more or less been on the same trajectory ever since, up until about six months or so ago when I finally decided that I wanted to try making my own clothes. But today, as I celebrate my anniversary, or amiversary, that was terrible. I want to go back to my roots. I want to try and recreate one of the very first amigurumi that I ever designed. And the piece that I've decided to redesign is this little guy here. Check out my very first amigurumi design, original amigurumi design. Isn't he derpy? It was supposed to be an axolotl. And I think there's there's the hint of an axolotl there, but mostly it's a blob with a tail. I mean, let's be real here, it's a blob with a tail. So I am going to take this guy and I'm going to do my best to recreate him and you all get to come along for the ride. So strap yourselves in, it's amigurumi designing time. Uh, so that wasn't entirely true. It wasn't amigurumi designing time then, but it is amigurumi designing time now. Something came up and I had to stop. We're going to be playing a little bit of yarn chicken here today because I don't know what I'll be designing. I don't know if this is going to be too much or not enough yarn. So if my axolotl abruptly changes colour in the middle of things, you know why. We are going to start off. You know what? I'm not going to start off with a magic circle. I know I did that in my popcorn stitch one. Instead, I'm going to shape the face a little bit by starting off with a chain instead. All right, that'll do. I don't want to make this too big. All right, on to round two and for round two, I want to try and add some shaping to the to the mouth because the axolotl I did, well, my popcorn stitch axolotl was just pretty straightforward. I just increased out for the head. But here I want to get some funky shaping going on, see if I can get a cute, cute little smile or something happening. So crocheted about halfway around and this will be the, the top and you know what, I'll work in the front loops because that will leave the back loops free for me to work into next round. And I can come up with a little design for the shape of the mouth. I think that's as complex as I'm going to get with the head. Uh, so from here, I'm probably just going to keep increasing out until I reach the size that I'm sort of happy with. Again, I don't want to go too large with this. Don't want to overdo it, which I may or may not have a tendency to do. You remember that bit where I said the mouth was as complex as I was going to get on the head. Ignore all that because I've decided that I'm going to incorporate the gills into the head itself, or at least part of them. And then we'll do gill one in the front loop here. So that means I can work into the back loop next round. And what do I want between them? Maybe two stitches. We'll try that. One and two. Then I think I'll make the middle, the middle gill just a little bit longer. Then I want two stitches in between, one and two, and I'll just replicate the first gill again, and that was six chains. 
five or six, no, six, because I did five single crochet back down the chain. That's not bad. Maybe a bit high, but not bad. So I'm going to single crochet across the head and then I'm going to replicate what I did with the girls, but on the other side. Finish the girl round and at this stage I'm thinking the the gills might be a little bit too far up the head, but I'm really not going to know that for sure until I've put the darker pink around the outside. So I'll leave them as they are for now, but this is the whole reason I'm writing everything down as I go so I can adjust the pattern in the future. And I think the head, I probably only need a couple more rounds before I can start decreasing. And from there, we'll go straight into working on the body. I'll add the eyes at this point. I've decreased down and the next round I start will technically be the first round of like the torso. What size eyes should I add? I'm thinking like 18 or 20 mil because I really do want them big. Where are we going to put these guys? Mm, like there-ish maybe? I like that, or at least it's good enough for now. <laughs> unlike, unlike the mouth section, every time I look at that, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, you bug it up there. Uh, so that's probably going to be the first thing I revise when I finish this pattern. Um, I won't add the stuffing just yet. I'll crochet a few, a few rounds of the body first. And speaking of the body, with the shaping, I want to go out this way a little bit. So I'm going to stack some increases on the side, but then I want the body to curve upwards as well. So I'll do a couple of rounds where the increases are stacked on the sides and then a couple of rounds, I think, where the increases are stacked on the top. I hope that'll give me a nice, a nice axolotl-ish shape. But first I need to write down what the last round was. that's a good time to add the stuffing to the head. I want to try and keep the front of the face or the head flat so I'm going to press that down onto my table as as I begin stuffing because that generally helps in that regard and like I think I mentioned earlier I am going to shape the eyes but I will do that at the end with just with my needle and thread sort of sculpt it. I really don't think I did a great job on the mouth. Maybe I could press it up this way instead. Yeah, we're going to have to revise that one, I think. All right, that'll do for now. Let's continue on with the body pattern. I don't think I'm going to need to decrease down too much more because I want the tail section to start off fairly wide and then we're going to narrow it down to more of a point. Might decrease down one more time. That concludes the torso section. I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing but I want to press the tail flat. So this is going to be the last bit of stuffing that I add, I think. Overall, it's looking good so far, I think, if you ignore the mouth section. 
Now I'm going to crochet some feet and I'm going to try and make the leg slash feet pattern all one piece too. But first, I gotta check how much yarn I've got left. A little bit. If I'm lucky, I can get four legs out of this, but if not, I'm gonna have to grab some other yarn. I don't want these legs to be too big. I might start off with four single crochet rather than my usual six. If I do the elbow section here, then I can do the bottom of the leg just slightly longer than the top. Trial and error, that's all this is. Trial and error. Working with these small rounds make my fingers feel like sausages, I swear. One leggy, all finished, and I'm just going to make sure that it looks all right. Got the sizing correct. You know, that's pretty good. Now I just need to make three more. I'm not going to have enough yarn left to do the last toe. Bugger. Just one toe, that's all I need, one toe. You know what, uh, I'll give it a shot. If not, we'll just say, say this axolotl lost one toe in a bar fight or something. Four. <laughs> I might just have enough. <sighs> Come on, I need to do one more slip stitch. That is quite possibly the most perfect game of yarn chicken I have ever played. I have all the pieces I need and no more yarn left. All right, next step, I need to sew all these legs on. Obviously, I won't be able to sew them on with the same color, so I'll just have to grab some other yarn from my scrap bag. The bulk of our little aquatic friend here is done. All I really need to do now is to add the, the details. And I'll be doing that in a darker pink. Might drop down hook size for this. I had a few different ideas on how I was going to approach the tail, but I think the easiest one is just going to be to surface crochet it on. I'm not enjoying working with this dark pink yarn. There's, there's reasons some of this stuff ends up in my scrap bag. Might chuck in a cheeky little Paco stitch at the end here, give the tail a bit of a point. That's looking okay. I think I could have chucked in a few triple crochets just to give it a little bit more height. But again, that's something we can fix in the next iteration of the axolotl. So there's axolotl number one. Not a bad effort overall in terms of shaping and such. There are a few areas that could use improvement and that's just how it goes when you're designing amigurumi. Sometimes you get really, really lucky and you have a perfect, well, <laughs> as close to perfect as you can get amigurumi on the first go. But usually, at least with me, it takes, you know, two or three goes before I'm happy with it. Sometimes if I'm unlucky, it can take up to 12 or more. But we won't talk about that. But despite her flaws, I think we can all agree that she is a significant improvement over the first one, which should not be surprising because this one was made in 2018, not long after I first learned to crochet. And this one was made with five years of crocheting experience. 
I do actually want to have a second attempt at this axolotl, mainly to improve the mouth section. I think I worked out what I did wrong. I did it upside down. So it didn't turn out the way I was picturing and I really want to fix that. So I might have a second attempt at her, at designing her, but that won't be today. That might be tomorrow's project. And here she is, axolotl number two. I have made some improvements over the first axolotl. I changed the body shape a little bit, nothing dramatic. I just think it looks a bit nicer through the back here now. And even though I made some improvements, I somehow ended up liking the mouth on this one even less than I liked the mouth on the first one. I changed up the pattern and this is what, maybe I can shove it in the camera, you can see it better. <laughs> That's not focusing. This is what I've got. I don't know how well you can see that. And I don't know, it kind of looks like a duck overdid the lip filler a little bit. <laughs> it's not terrible. And even though I don't really like it, I think it still is an improvement over the first one. But I still wasn't 100% thrilled with it. So that's why I made a third axolotl. So I kept everything else the same, except I changed up the mouth. And this is more what I was going for in the first place, except... It's kind of given me snake snake face vibes. It looks like a snake, but I actually really dig it. I kind of like it. I think it's cute. Will I make any more changes to my axolotl pattern? Probably, but maybe I'll do that in five more years. When I've been crocheting for 10 years, we can do this again and we can see how much I've changed in those five years. And I really enjoy doing this. So perhaps I might go back to some of my other patterns, either the older patterns on my channel or just some of the original patterns that I learned to design on, like derp face over here. I know there's a moth pattern that I have that I definitely want to update. I might start with that one. But that will be a video for another day, possibly. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you all next week with another video. Bye.